This is a guide reading for chapter 15, section 2. So go ahead and open up your books to page 411 and read uh, all of page 411 and do pay careful attention to uh, what initially vibrates as in musical instruments as sometimes on tests I do ask you to explain the process for uh, a musical instrument and how it makes sound and how it changes its pitch and that would include starting off what actually does the initial vibration. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you're going to be reading the rest of uh, this section eventually. Uh, right now I'd like you to read page 412, 413, and 414, but stop when you get to resonance on strings. Before you read, a uh, couple of things. You may get a little bit confused in the, uh, for instance, on the bottom of page 413, you'll see uh, the information for when it uh, resonates. Uh, do your best to understand that. We will go over very specifically the one case that you are going to be responsible for uh, on the final. Also, before you read, take a look at the top of page 413, and uh, they show the air pressure versus the displacement of air uh, and how uh, the pressure anti-node can be a higher or low pressure region, but the displacement node there is a minimum uh, don't get too caught up in that. It doesn't matter which way you draw it. So go ahead and read those pages and then come back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, also, a quick reminder before I have you read the rest of the section. Uh, and remember what wavelength actually is. And you might want to go back and look at some of those equations again. Uh, if you picture a sine wave, it's got to go up uh, above the x-axis and then back below and then coming back to zero. So at the bottom of page 413, uh, just take a look at the first picture there. We're uh, on the far left of page 413 at the bottom and you'll see that that's only part of a wave okay it's only in fact a fourth of a wave so if you wanted the wavelength you would take that distance and multiply it by four that's how they're getting some of these they're looking at it and saying what part of a wave do we have uh, we're gonna talk more about that in class like I said alright so you should have read up through resonance on strings now uh, while you're reading resonance on strings and sound quality uh, just pay careful attention. Those are a few couple things that I may or may not mention in class, uh, but I think they're uh, fairly self-explanatory, with the exception of once again uh, where this resonance occurs, which I said you'll only have one case that I'm going to actually make responsible for in physics. So read resonance on string and sound quality, uh, and also page 417, uh, the sound spectrum fundamentals and harmonics. Read that as well, and then come on back. Once again, uh, not going to be responsible for when the uh, harmonics happen, except for the one case, uh, which if you've already followed the bottom of page 413, uh, you're going to be okay with that. You'll be able to follow in class as well. Uh, we're going to use the information that you read about here uh, in resonance uh, and the relationship between lambda and the length to determine speed of sound in our activity. We're going to have a uh, resonator, a closed pipe resonator. The last section you need to read, uh, or the last part you need to read is page 418 and page 419. Uh, and we will not have the terminology dissonance and consonance on the test. Uh, however, some of these ideas could show up as multiple choice questions. So please read it. Uh, the beat frequency uh, at, the, at the bottom of page 418, uh, that's something we're going to be having a couple problems on and hopefully you'll be able to hear it either with an animation or if we can have a couple people bring in uh, uh, some uh, toners or some tone generators uh, you'll actually be able to hear the up and down thing uh, and notice when you're reading about beat frequency take a look at the bottom of 418 right now uh, the equation for beat frequencies there is kinda in the middle it's not one of those one that's bolded that is one you need for the test though uh, so please don't forget about that one it's a pretty straightforward equation uh, but you do need it. Also read about sound production and noise and make sure it's really important in, the, in, the, in these two pages that you make sure you're looking at the pictures because the pictures are going to take some time to understand and the pictures are going to help make sense of what they're talking about in the text. That's it. At this point you should have read all of 15.2.